Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to the lesson today. We are still discussing electrolysis. In the previous lesson, we were discussing on what happens during electrolysis. And we said that during electrolysis, you have, or during electrolysis of molten substances, then in molten substances, we have the positive ions and we have the negatively charged ions. And the positively charged ions, we say they are attracted to the negatively charged electrode, which is the cathode, and the positively charged ions are attracted towards the negatively charged electrode, which is the negatively charged ions are attracted towards the positively charged electrode, which is the anode. And once they are attracted to those areas, then they get migrated. They migrate to those areas and they are deposited at both the anode and the cathode. In this lesson, I want us to do more examples or to show you what happens or writing more equations on what happens at both the anode and the cathode. And in this lesson, we are discussing the electrolysis of lead to iodide. Lead to iodide. Lead to iodide is also an ionic compound. Therefore, it being an ionic compound, then it does not conduct in solid or it does not conduct electricity or electric current in solid state, but in molten state. And we see that molten state, this is when you heat lead to iodide until it melts. That's why, or well, that's the function of heat. The heat is just weakening the electrostatic forces of attraction, which are holding the ions of lead to iodide together. Then once they are weakened, then the ions now become mobile and they can conduct electric current. But when in solid state, it does not conduct because the ions are held together by the electrostatic forces of attraction in fixed positions. They do not move. Therefore, in this, when you heat it first, then lead to iodide solid will melt and become a liquid. So when it is heated, lead to iodide, it melts. Therefore, that melt will have the ions of lead and the state is liquid and you have the iodide ions which are also in liquid liquid state. That is what happens when you heat. When you heat lead to iodide you get lead ions and iodide ions. Those ions are now in this solution and they're now able to conduct electric currents. Then we say that positively charged ions, they will be attracted at the cathode. Therefore, we expect these lead ions will be attracted at the cathode and they will migrate at that cathode. Then the iodide ions will be attracted by the negatively charged electrode, which is the anode, and they will migrate at that anode. Now, writing equations for what happens at the anode and the cathode, at the cathode, this is this negatively charged electrode because it is connected to the negatively charged electrode, no, the negatively charged or the negative terminal of the power source. And remember again, you say that the long stroke that represents a positive terminal while the short stroke 
represents the negative terminal. Therefore, the lead ions will be deposited at this cathode. And lead ions at the cathode, or what happens at the cathode, the lead ions will gain electrons. When the lead ions gain electrons, then you'll deposit uh, atoms of lead, and the equation will be like this. You are depositing an atom of lead, and this will be green color. Lead is green color. Therefore, what happens at the anode, you are going to observe the gray color on the surface of on the surface of that electrode. So the gray solid will be deposited at this electrode. And the electrode is cathode. Therefore, that is the equation of what happens at the cathode. Lead ions gain two electrons to form an electrically neutral atom, lead metal. And what happens at the anode? So at the anode, you are depositing iodide ions at the anode. Therefore, the equation will be iodide ions. These ones are going to lose electrons. When they lose electrons, you are going to have iodine vapor, which is purple in color. Then two electrons will be lost. So you are going to observe purple purple vapor at the anode. Again, which on cooling, you are going to observe the shiny black, the shiny black crystals when it cools. That is what happens at the anode and the cathode. Again, the physical states should be included. Therefore, at the cathode, there is gain of electrons, then at the anode, there is loss of electrons. That is what happens when lead to iodide or when you conduct electrolysis of lead to iodide. And those are the equations which you expect at the cathode and also at the anode. I hope you understand that so clearly. If we did the electrolysis of, let's say, copper, copper 2 chloride, if this was copper 2 chloride, chloride. When you hit copper 2 chloride, then again you are going to form or you are going to have a solution or a liquid, not a solution but a liquid of copper 2 chloride because all the electrostatic forces of attraction have been weakened and the ions are now free. And therefore, when you hit, this is what you are going to observe. The copper 2 chloride solid you'll have copper ions which are in liquid form and chloride ions. They are deposited. Now those you'll have, when this copper 2 chloride is heated, then the electrostatic forces are weakened and you'll have a liquid of copper 2 chloride and that liquid you have copper ions and chloride ions in that liquid. And therefore, the copper ions which are positively charged, copper ions are positively charged, these ones will be deposited at the cathode, and these ones at the anode. And therefore, if you are to write the equation at the anode and the cathode, then at the cathode, remember cathode is the negatively 
or is the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the power source. Then at the cathode, we expect the copper ions. And the copper ions will gain electrons. They are going to gain two electrons because of the charge. The charge is too positive and therefore they gain two electrons. Then once they gain two electrons which are negatively charged, then copper, a copper solid is deposited. Remember copper is brown in color. And what happens, you'll observe a brown solid on the surface of the cathode. On the surface of the cathode, again, these electrons, we say they are mostly, the substance mostly used is graphite because it is unreactive and also it is cheaper compared to some other materials. Therefore, this is what is observed at the cathode. Then at the anode, We expect chlorine ions, which are in liquid state. They're now going to lose electrons, and chlorine gas is going to be seen the green, the, the yellowish the, or the green gas will be observed at the anode because chlorine is it's yellow green. it's a green gas, then this is brown. That is what is observed at both the anode and the cathode. And those are the equations for the reactions at both the anode and the cathode. Remember again, I told you that th these are liquids. They are not solutions. They are not solutions because it is copper to chloride, which, which has been heated. It has melted and therefore there is no water if it was a solution then this would be if it was a solution the copper chloride a solid when you add water then you now have copper ions as aqueous or a solution and the chloride ions again in that solution this is when you add water But now, in heating, we have not added any water. We have just heated. I hope you get the difference. Yes, that's what happens. Well, that's the difference between this and this. It is a physical state. These are aqueous or a solution. This is a liquid. Therefore, that is now what happens when you conduct electrolysis of various conduct electrolysis of various substances. I hope that you've understood that so clearly. I want to leave you with this assignment. And the assignment is that before I give you the assignment, I have to mention this, that the examples you have done, that these are examples of what you call binary electrolytes. Then you see that a binary electrolyte is an electrolyte which contains one type of cation and one type of anion. An electrolyte that contains one type of anion and one type of cation. That is a binary electrolyte. Remember when you talk about anion, we are talking about negatively charged ions and cations are negatively charged ions. In this case, we have, this is the cation, it is positively charged, this is the anion, they are negatively charged. Therefore, this is a binary electrolyte because it has one type of cation 
and one type of anion. That is what you call a binary electrolyte. Then this is the assignment. Therefore, the, that assignment is two questions. One, is write the write the questions at the anode and the cathode for the following binary electrolyte, and the electrolytes are magnesium chloride and aluminium oxide. And second, the diagram below shows a setup which was used by a student to investigate the effect of electricity on, on molten lead to iodide. This is the diagram. So you have lead to iodide, it is being heated, and you have the power source, positive and the negative terminal, the bulb, and the switch. Then these are the questions. Question number one, explain what happens to the lead to iodide during electrolysis. Second, why does solid lead to iodide, not allow passage of electricity. Third, why was it important to carry out the experiment in a fume chamber? And last, write the equations to show the reaction taking place, one at the cathode and two at the anode. Therefore, ensure that you answer those questions and answer them uh, correctly. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss the applications of electrolysis. Where is electrolysis applied? We meet in the next lesson.